Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 craziest events in history that actually happened, believe it or not. Let's dive in. Number 10, the first marathon. Now, the term marathon, right off the bat, it comes from ancient Greek history, the Battle of Marathon, I've certainly mentioned on this channel a few times. But let's look further a few hundred years, give or take. The first ever Olympics marathon. It was an absolute shit show. Seven miles from the finish line, one guy started ingesting strychnine and egg whites just so we could finish the race. So yeah, that was the first ever modern use of narcotics in an official Olympic game sport. One dude was also running the marathon in dress shoes and dress pants. Just a classy lad with 58 blisters just booking for hours at a time. William Garcia, one of the 32 competitors, straight up almost died during this marathon. He collapsed mid-race. He barely made a recovery. Have you done a marathon before? If so, tell me your experience down below. I did the Toronto Marathon a month ago and I got 35 kilometers out of 42. I was so close it hurt my soul. If only I wasn't wearing those dress shoes, you know, maybe I would have finished. So close. Number nine, unsinkable Sam. In our last video, I asked who likes dogs and who likes cats and yada, yada, yada. This one here, I'll give to the cat people. You get one. Cats have nine lives. I'm a firm believer in this theory now. Unsinkable Sam was the nickname for a cat who survived several shipwrecks during World War II. His tail began aboard a German warship called the Bismarck. Yeah, also imagine that image right there. 2,200 soldiers just standing in a line, and then also this black and white cat that somehow snuck aboard. Nobody knows how it got on, but I'm pretty sure one guy does. He's like, the Bismarck was decimated during one of the attacks, of course, and while the HMS Kozak was looking for survivors shortly after, they saw Oscar, the cat, on a plank. Yeah, he had to earn the unsinkable Sam alias, all right? You get a new life, you get a new name, then, then it happens. The HMS Kozak hauled him aboard, but then several months later, the Kozak was destroyed. Now this time, it was the HMS Ark Royal who spotted the cat, and then the fearless feline was dubbed Unsinkable Sam. Little man passed away in 1955, not on a warship, so that's great. I hope there's therapy in cat heaven, my God. He's like, well, four out of the nine sucked. I don't know. Number eight, Robert Liston. In the early 19th century, crowds would gather to watch Dr. Robert Liston work, okay? They would huddle around like it was a dance battle. They get nice and close and breathe in each other's mouths. He was known as the fastest knife surgeon in the West. I know, how many red flags can you find already? A crowd, a fast surgery, this guy just in the middle of it. What's going on? Like, please help me. Please put me together. I don't know. This was a time before anesthesia had been developed, so you wanted things wrapped up quick. Pun intended. Now, Robert, he would have you amputated and sutured in three minutes flat, right? Don't you want that? Don't you want a nice fast surgery? Mortality rate was 300%. Not great at all, in fact. And then one fateful day, Robert attempted to beat any record previously held. He was trying to perform the fastest surgery, but during so, he accidentally cut off his assistant's fingers as well as the patient's leg. So, I don't know what the guy's doing with his arms, but you're like, buddy, slow down. We got more than three minutes, it seems. He also hit somebody else watching by accident. You know what I mean? Remember how I said crowds would gather, the old surgery crowd? This is why you don't stand too close, okay? It's like crump battles. You get too close, you're getting nicked by something. Either Robert or some guy in Tim's. Both are gonna hurt. I'm glad surgeons are taking their time now. I'm also glad no surgeons are trying new experiments at a record time. That's also nice. Can you take your time, please? Number seven, the first open heart surgery. Moving on to some other surgeons a little better, hopefully. We've discussed ancient Egyptians and how they would clean the entire body out for the whole mummification process and then put the heart back in. Now, of course, they weren't alive during any of this, but when was the first open heart surgery? When did that happen? What did that room look like? The first successful open heart surgery went down in Chicago in 1893. It was honestly unbelievable. The patient was a man named James Cornish. He got a knife wound to the chest during a brawl. It was probably Robert Liston just doing his thing. Maybe he got too close, I don't know. And the surgeon, Dr. Daniel Hale, Williams, who, by the way, used to be a shoemaker's assistant, he saved this man's life and he also made history. In the city's first interracial hospital too, might I add. So a lot of firsts happening in this one. Now there weren't any textbooks on this type of operation at the time, so the odds of survival, of course, were extremely low. In fact, there weren't any odds at all, right? No x-rays, no antibiotics, no anesthesia, no problem, right? Using just a scalpel, Dr. Williams cut through his chest, weaved through all the nerves slowly, might I add, thankfully. He weaved through muscles, ribs, everything until eventually he closed a severed artery right near the heart. Cornish survived, thankfully, and come 1894, Williams was promoted to chief surgeon at the Freedman's Hospital in Washington, D.C. Imagine he went back to being a shoemaker's assistant. He's like, all right, cool. 
Now I want those shoes. Number six, the Pfizer Fine. When we think of the name Pfizer now, there's obviously mixed feelings, pun intended. But back in 2009, before they were making cures, they were paying some hefty fines. The world's largest pharmaceutical company had to pay a record-breaking fine. They had to pay $2.3 billion in criminal and civil penalties over unlawful prescription drug promotions. Now included in this mighty slap on the wrist was a $1.2 billion criminal fee. Now if that didn't sound bad enough, in the agreement was also a criminal forfeiture of $105 million. So you're paying and you're also getting more stuff taken away. It's all bad. This was the fourth time Pfizer got charged with this magnitude in a decade. They were on a pretty bad streak. What got them in hot water in the first place is that they would promote their products at resorts, right? They would invite doctors to these meetings, give them golf, massages, whatever. They'd pepper you up nice so that you were team Pfizer by the end of the trip. And you were all tanned. You looked nice, right? FBI Assistant Director Kevin Perkins says the corporate giant was blatantly violating the law and misleading the public through false marketing claims. Number five, no birds at the funeral. If you ever want to liven up a funeral, try bringing a parrot. They'd love to heckle, turns out. Former President Andrew Jackson, he passed away a long time ago. He passed away in 1845. Now, it's important to note that he passed away before his pet did. He passed away before his pet parrot died. So the parrot, of course, attended the funeral, right? How lovely, right? I bet after I said that, you said, oh, maybe you gave it a thumbs up, maybe you subscribed. Good stuff going around, right? It's lovely. Thing is, the parrot loved to swear. Yeah, he had a few curse words in his back pocket. This parrot actually heckled so much during the funeral that they had to remove it. How epic is that? It got kicked out like it was a comedy club. They're like, all right, put your wings behind your little bird neck. We're out of here. Number four, illegal pedestrian crossing. I see this far too often living in the city. Toronto is wild for this. It drives me crazy. People jaywalking. Looks like there's not a truck coming your way. They do that little wave, a little smile, a little weird walk, and they just go wherever they want. Middle of a Toronto intersection. They're like, hey, I'm 92. See ya. Everyone's slamming their brakes, avoiding them all of a sudden. You're holding up traffic even more. Now, in China, jaywalking, that's a no-go. Article 40 of Beijing's traffic law stipulates that drivers in motor vehicles cannot suddenly stop even if it's at a crosswalk. So yeah, you can't even stop when you're at a crosswalk. You have to wait for cars. So if you're not in a car, you have to wait. You don't get the right of way automatically, like, you know, most of the time. And for drivers, it's forbidden to stop at these crossings. You gotta just keep going. If you do, you're getting a fine. Hopefully just a warning, but possibly a fine for stopping at a crosswalk. How insane is that? Number three, raining coffee. The sky is falling. Sometimes it's frozen lizards and sometimes it's bugs. But you know what? Sometimes maybe coffee will fall from the sky. I don't know. Get your mugs ready. We're waking up early tomorrow. I don't know. Back in 1969, a South Carolina factory was busy. The non-dairy creamer, Cremora, was doing great production-wise, but they didn't have the greatest air vents in the factory. All of a sudden, the powder mixture leaked out one day, went into the air, where it then mixed with falling rain, and... Voila, now we have double doubles falling from the clouds. Now we have a really odd rainfall. Chester, South Carolina. It was the day we woke up to coffee goop on our lawns instead of dew. That's memorable for sure. The company ended up paying a fine of $4,000 for allowing their product to be released from the plant. Could have been worse, could have been a lot worse. Could have been a spider factory, I don't know. First thing I can think of. Number two, they can't stop all of us. Remember that Area 51 raid that went down back in 2019? Months of planning, gathering heads, planning trips, renting cars, all to get everyone out to Nevada. Everyone was determined to find out the truth about aliens. It was a big raid where everyone planned to overthrow every Area 51 guard. So, did it work? What ended up happening there? I forget. Everyone! We're not here for photos! We're here to rescue the aliens! Rescue. Yeah, okay, it didn't work. Turns out a handful of gamers can't overthrow a government military base. Who knew? Shoot, maybe next time, I don't know. So what was the goal here? 1.5 million people signed up to storm Area 51 in 2019, but this wasn't the first time something like this happened. Back in the 1950s, the public also wanted answers. It was June 17th, 1959, and the Rizzo Evening Gazette published a story with the headline reading, More Flying Objects Seen in Clark Sky. That's pretty alarming. Then the paper went on to describe how Sergeant Wayne Anderson, a local sheriff, was one of many who spotted what the paper described as an object bright green and 
in color and descending towards the earth at a speed too great to be an airplane. Yeah, I just watched Jordan Peele's No. Couldn't have done this list at a better time if you ask me. What did they see? It was green, it was close, was it Optimus Prime just coming to say what's up? I need answers, folks. And finally, number one, tombstones ashore. Here we go, death is calling. Back in 2012, the world thankfully did not end, but if you believe that it was going to, this definitely would have freaked you out. Back in May 2012, two friends were on a nice beach walk right on the coast of San Francisco's Ocean Beach. Now, when all of a sudden, something that looked like a fridge started to crash through the waves and then onto the shore. Now, it turns out it was not a fridge. That would have been lovely. It would have been a nice surprise. Just some fridge goods popping out from 1976. It turns out it was a massive tombstone from the year 1876. It was a little more haunting than a fridge. The tomb originally belonged to Emma Bosworth, and then just one month later, another stone was found, this time with a different name. Of course, that'd be weird if it was the same name again. And then another one, and then another one. So what's going on here? The next tombstone belonged to Delia Presby Oliver from 1890. But the condition that they were in also, these tombstones, they looked brand new. You probably expect as I'm describing this that they're all old and broken apart. Nope. They're all pristine, even more haunting almost. I don't know. These tombstones came from the Laurel Hill Cemetery after it had shut its gates in 1940. So the headstones were then used as a makeshift seawall. If you ask me, that's a little rude. Your uncle's tombstone just covered in barnacles like he's Davy Jones? No thanks, pop that out, put that back, draw that out. Those are the top 10 crazy events in history that actually happened. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and I'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.